So let's try selecting the diffuse map and set the U tiling to tiled and the V tiling to no tiling. And then select our opacity map and just reverse that. So the U tiling will be set to none and the V tiling will be set to tiled. So I think this is going to work now. Yes, there we go. So if I select the opacity map and then adjust the U position, we can see that the uh, tick marks are moving around my gauge as I had hoped them to be. So that's actually just right. So let's set our default value now in preparation for animation. And since this is really just a copy of my inner gradient UVs, um, I can, I think it was negative two, or negative, uh, not 2.70, I think it was negative 0.970. So if I go in the U position and set it to negative 0.970, it should match the inner gradients uh, U position offset. So let's go ahead and move on to the reflection. And the reflection is going to be like a ghosted trail that follows our, our needle around. And it's essentially a reflection of that blue gradient that's going to be sweeping around the inner um, portion of the gauge. So it's kind of a, um, a, a reflection effect. So it's going to reflect on the glass lens in the center and the inner bezel um, of my uh, round sort of metallic shroud here. So let's go ahead and assign the blue color to that. And let's pick the opacity map, which will be the reflection. Actually, it's going to be the diffuse map. My apologies. Reflection speedo gradient. So once I selected that, let me bump up the emissive power so you can see it. So there's going to be a nice reflection on the glass in the center, which we don't see yet because we haven't assigned the texture map to the lens yet. And now we've got a reflection on the inner bevel of that uh, round bezel object. So that's good. I'm going to move the emissive power down to about 50 and then choose a different blue, slightly different blue for this, just so it shows up a little bit more. Let's go ahead and try that. And in this situation, the texture map is going to be rotating around the UV rotation axis on my texture map instead of adjusting the U and V position. And if you remember, that's because the texture map's uh, center is actually right here. This, this actual texture space takes up a corner of my square texture map, so the pivot is in the center here. So I'm going to adjust the U and V position offset and the pivot offset to negative 0.5, negative 0.5, and then 0.5 and 0.5 on the pivot. So that throws the pivot to the center. And so now if I rotate the U and V rotation on this texture map, we can see that it's uh, behaving properly. Now the one thing we um, also need to add is a mask so that it just when it goes around, we don't actually see a gradient here because we want this gradient to start at zero with the rest of the uh, the blue gradient and the gradient ticks that we, we have set up. So to do that, I need to make a mask. And uh, I've actually already done so, and it looks like this. So let me add a layer, a black layer, so we can see what this map actually looks like. So this is our mask. So anything that sits within this white zone, this white area, will be um, visible, and everything outside of it will not be. So essentially, it's just a mask. It's not going to animate. It's just going to stay static. And so we're going to add that to our our material here in our opacity map channel. Reflection speedo opacity. And we also need to set the, the offsets here as well. So with our opacity map selected, I need to go ahead and 
adjust the offsets so that we uh, can rotate it about the UV direction. And so I need to set it to 180 degrees. And this is because I don't want the diffuse map to be visible from this range to this range from 170 to 0. It cannot be visible there. So now with that mask set up, if I select the diffuse map and adjust the UV rotation, we see that it gets cut off where it needs to be cut off. So at the 170 mark, it gets cut off there. And then over here in the U, or I'm sorry, the uh, UV rotation, if, we, if I set it to about 10 or 9, we can clearly see a visible line here where it gets cut off. It gets cut off at zero. So the default value is going to be zero. And now that's ready to be animated. The center gradient is a static object, so um, there's no animation values associated with that, so that can be left alone once I add the diffuse map to it, which is alpha common. I'm going to bump its emissive power to about 50 and give it that same blue. It already has a blue value to it, but I'm going to kind of enhance it just a bit more. Maybe try something like that. And so that's the center gradient. Now the last item is the lens. And that also receives the alpha common texture map. And I'm going to give it a white diffuse value there. So with that set up, we can begin animating the speedometer. So let's go ahead and convert this group to a component. So I'm going to say make component, right click on the group, choose make component. And I'm going to rename this to speedometer. Now if I click into, well I'm going to leave the master slide view, we don't need to be in the master slide view on the scene level anymore. Now if I double click into the speedometer component, um, I have the group with the, uh, the geometry within it. And the group is kind of redundant at this point. So I'm going to move all of the elements outside of this group here. And then delete this group. So now we're ready to begin our animation. And the default timeline length is 10 seconds, so I'm going to just leave that. And the first thing I'm going to animate is the needle. And I'm going to base all the other animated portions of the gauge to this needle object here. So all I need to do is rotate the needle from 0 to 170. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the rotation value or property in the inspector palette and choose unlink property, property from master. Set a keyframe by clicking on the animate toggle. And then at 10 seconds, I'm going to rotate around to about 256 degrees, negative 256 in the z-axis. And it sets a keyframe automatically since I have the uh, auto set keyframes turned on. So now if I scrub the timeline, we can see that we've got some, some animation there. Really simple. Uh, the next thing to animate, let's go ahead and animate our inner gradient in the inner gradient ticks. And so the opacity map of the inner gradient is going to be animated in the U position. Remember earlier, we set the value to negative 0.970. So I'm going to right click, choose unlink, and set a keyframe. So that's our start key. Go to 10 seconds. And so now I'm going to adjust this value. And it takes a little bit of fine tuning just to get the right the right value, but I'm gonna get it dialed in here. So let's try maybe negative two point 
or 0 0.280, so minus 0 0.280 seems to work just fine. Um, and I'm going to adjust the needle to match that line exactly. So now we get some some really good animation starting to happen here. So at the very end, I need to adjust my needle to maybe minus 254. And then let's adjust the opacity map to maybe point, point 0.285. Let's actually just keep it at minus 0 0.280 and then adjust the needle to minus 254.8. And I think that matches up pretty good. So now if I move the the playhead on the uh, component, we see that it's working out pretty well.